Guys, if you've been wanting to make money by literally shopping in person, this video is gonna show you the ultimate blueprint and how to use the Amazon seller scanning app. I sold over a million dollars last year. I'm gonna share everything that I know step by step so that anyone can do this. So if you're going to TJ Maxx, Walmart, Kohl's, Target, Nike, or any other retail stores, you will know what to do. So by the end of this video, I promise you that you will know all the ads features and how to make a decision on which products to buy for a product. As a bonus, I'm also going to share the exact workflow that I use so you know what to do. Let's get started. Look, I didn't have a lot of capital when I first started Amazon FBA and you might be in the same boat. So I'm gonna share a short story on to see what's possible out there. I first started going to Goodwill and other thrift stores because I was looking for used books to sell on Amazon FBA. The reason I picked used textbooks is that they were cheap to buy. You know, you could buy one for anywhere from a dollar all the way to five bucks. So I was doing this for a couple months and as some would say, being in the trenches and this is where I really put in my experience and learned a lot on how to use the Amazon seller scanning app to find winning products. This then led me to my aha moment aha. where I slowly transitioned to sourcing other items like beauty, grocery, and shoes. So then I found myself going to different Nike outlets, you know, looking for a shoe that may have been on sale for 20 bucks. Then I would purchase that shoes, bring it home, print the label, send it to Amazon FBA, then list it. And because I I was reselling a name brand item like Nike, there was already an existing listing on amazon.com. And all I had to do was pretty much add my product in there and wait till someone purchased it. And this is pretty much the process and it would just then repeat itself. And this would be the approach or the business model that I would do if I was to start my Amazon FBA business again and it's very beginner friendly. Scanning products with the Amazon seller app is exactly how my friend Donald had, you know, grew his business to seven figures and still does it to this day. What he would do is drive around his city to different retail stores that have a huge sale and purchase shoes from them. If you do this properly, it's going to be a super low risk for you if you're starting out because you will only be buying products that are making you money after you scan it on the Amazon seller app. And this is how the game starts of flipping. You know, in a perfect world, let's say you have $1,000. You purchase inventory to sell on Amazon and let's say you make 20% or $200 profit from it. Now you have $1,200 that you can use for the next cycle and you pretty much continue flipping and flipping it until it gets bigger and bigger. Then this is when you start to realize the whole thing actually works. So what you want to do first is download the Amazon seller app. So you're going to do this at your phone's app store. So in this demo, I have an iPhone. So I'm going to go to the Apple store here and just type in Amazon seller app. It's the first one here. Okay, since I already have downloaded it, I'm just gonna open it. I uh, just keep in mind, if you don't have an account yet, you wanna make sure that you create an Amazon seller account before you log in and go into the features on the app. So you can do a lot of things in the Amazon seller app, just like the desktop, but in this video, we're just gonna focus on how to use the scanning app properly. So there are two ways how you can use the scanning app. So on the top right, you can have the camera version right here, as you can see. And the second one is you can add a product which you're gonna click right here and you can either hit the camera on the um, side there. It's gonna pull up the camera again. Or you go back there and just type in the UPC number or the name of the product itself. So let's say you are at Walmart and you uh, wanna scan this card right here. Go ahead and scan the uh, barcode on the back as you can see. All right, so you can see the bicycle um, playing card right here. So you can see there's different listings. Let's go ahead and try a different product. So let's say you are at Nike and you're gonna wanna scan the shoe. The same process goes. Scan the uh, barcode, which is on the front right here. As you can see the Revolution 5 uh, product right there. Let's try another example. We got a book right here. So again, this works on any products and I'm just showing you example what's possible out there that you can scan. So we got the side hustle book uh, right here that showed up. If you wanna try blow pops, okay? Or even better, we got Nutella. All right, let's scan the Nutella here. As you can see, the Nutella showed up. And one thing to note as well is if an item don't have a barcode or UPC, you can actually just scan the product itself. And this is how intelligent the uh, software is. Give it a second there. So you can see we didn't even scan the uh, UPC and it still showed up on the um, product itself here. 
So keep in mind, if the product is available for sale on amazon.com, you will always see a listing from there. If it doesn't show up on a listing, after scanning the UPC barcode, you can try searching for the product. And if it still doesn't show up, then it's not on amazon.com and you might just have to move on to the next product that you can scan. Okay, so here are the important parts coming up here. So you wanna make sure you pay attention or rewatch the video. So for the sake of example, we're gonna use the Nike shoe here to kind of show you how the process works. So let's say you had found a shoe here and you wanna scan it if you are a Nike or wherever you may at. So let's go ahead and scan it here. All right, so you can see right here, we got the Nike Revolution 5. So the important part you wanna first pay attention to is in the bottom left. If you are looking at the app, it's gonna show the sales rank. The sales rank is very important if you are a beginner as that will be kind of like your guide if a product can be a good item or not. Because what you wanna do is you wanna move as fast as possible and be efficient and this can take time, right? So good rule of thumb is you wanna stay under 100,000 or below in terms of sales rank because the lower the sales rank, the faster it sells. So keep in mind 100,000 or below. So this one is 5,187. So that's a pretty good sales rank. So what you want to do next is click on the title. And so any products you're scanning, just simply click on the title right there and it's going to open up a new page. All right. So this is pretty much the listing product detail page right here. So as you can see, it has a new and used right here. 99% of the time, if you are doing retail arbitrage and scanning items in different retail stores, you're going to be selling brand new items. So this is what we're gonna do as that's gonna be 99% of the cases. So then what you wanna do is click on gross proceeds. Okay, go ahead and click on gross proceeds and it's gonna open up another page where it breaks down the seller fulfilled and the Amazon fulfilled. So my business, we pretty much do 100% Amazon fulfilled. So again, we're gonna go through the example here. If you wanna do seller fulfilled or curious, it's pretty much uh, kind of like eBay. You as a person, you're gonna ship it to the customer, whoever purchased it, so it doesn't have to go to Amazon. Amazon fulfilled, as what it says, is FBA. So you send your products to Amazon, then if anyone purchases it, Amazon will take care of what happens after the product, uh, you know, wherever it goes. So let's go ahead and click on Amazon fulfilled here. As you can see uh, with the green check mark, that is the lowest price or the price advertised to the customer if they were shopping on amazon.com right now. So it's showing 63.88. Then right below that, you can see the fees with FBA. So it's currently $18.05. If you click fees with FBA, it actually breaks down for you to see exactly what type of fees uh, you will be paying in terms of uh, working with Amazon. So you can see it's got the referral fee, variable cost, order handling, weight handling, those are zero, pick and pack, because they will do everything. So that comes out to 18 bucks and five cents. Uh, shipping to Amazon, uh, I estimate mine uh, for my business, it comes out to 40 cents per pound. Uh, you can go up to 50, cents per pound um it, it vary for you know depending on the item but 40 cents to 50 cents is a good rule of thumb so since the pound of this one is just a little bit over a pound it comes out to 81 cents which is not bad then lastly the cost of the product so for example let's say i found this shoes you know for 25 dollars at the nike store because it was you know 50 percent off or something crazy all right so you put in 25 bucks there as our buy cost or cost of purchase and our profit after all the fees is $20.02, so that's you know a pretty good percentage in terms of ROI. So that's basically where you can see all the breakdown. And you might be thinking, Lester, this is a great product. Let's go ahead and buy it. But hold on. This is where a lot of uh, mistakes from beginners that can happen because they get excited immediately. But we're going to do another check just to make sure that everything checks out properly and it's all good. But so far, it's looking good. The rookie mistake that a lot of beginners make is they don't consider different factors like, you know, how many times it sells per month, how many sellers are you competing with? That's really important. How many uh, people have in stock with this exact same item? You know, so these are questions that you will learn as you go through your Amazon FBA journey. And this is the same thing that I learned when I first started by putting a lot of time uh, a lot of errors and failures. So I'm sharing this information with you so that way you'll know exactly what to do. So now I'm gonna share the exact workflow that I do if I was doing resale arbitrage. So that way you can follow it to the T and make the best decision possible when you are sourcing out there. So let's say you just went through all the steps uh, like we just did right there and you found after all the 
fees, your net profit is pretty good and you're really excited to purchase this product. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna use the AI software called Seller Amp. If you didn't know, Seller Amp is pretty much a cheat sheet when you're doing retail arbitrage because it will show pretty much all the data and more that you may need in order to make the best decision possible on top of the calculator profit itself. So if you don't have it yet, you wanna make sure you download Seller Amp. Uh, if you don't, it's about $20 per month. And what's really cool about Seller Amp is that it connects to your personal Amazon seller account. So it pretty much shows you if you are allowed to sell that specific product or any other information that may be associated to your account. So once you're at your app store, you just type in seller amp. All right, since I already have it, I'm gonna head and open up seller amp here. All right, so once you're at seller amp and logged in, it pretty much works similar to the Amazon seller app. So we'll go ahead and uh, scan an item here. So you can see you press and scan right here and it'll show up. Scan the Nutella. All right, so we're using Nutella for this example here. All right, we got the Nutella product listing out here from Amazon, and you can see right off the bat that Seller Amps gives a lot more information than the Amazon Seller app. So what we're gonna do right here in the first is you can see all the offers. You can see number one seller is Amazon. They have 10 uh, in stock. Then you can see the other sellers be uh, below that, like number three has 999 plus, right? So this is why it's important to see how many in stock you're competing with or how many sellers you're competing with. And right in the middle here, you can see how many times it sells per month. So with this one, it sells uh, 6,000 or more. And right here on the cost price, similar like the Amazon seller app, you can put in the buy cost in terms of that here. Okay, so let's say we found it for a dollar because it was on sale and you make a profit of $1.29 with 129 uh, percent ROI with that current sales price and what's really the thing that I want to point out if you are seller amp uh, using seller amp is that you can see the ranking and prices you know the past 30 days 90 days and all this information that are really important especially the BSR or best selling rank right next to the little American flag right there the chart so yeah the chart here is really important because you want to make sure that the price is flat it's not really fluctuating as much so for this example um, hovering through right here, the buy box is 1064, 1079, 1019. So there's not much, a lot of difference. You can go back to a year from today. So you can see it's pretty flat, right? So in a perfect world, you would want a buy box that's pretty flat. So that way you can estimate and predict where it's going to be priced at once you purchase the item and send to Amazon FBA. And again, not all Keepa charts gonna look like this. Some will kind of fluctuate and all that stuff. So what you want to do in the worst case scenario, if uh, the buy box is really low and the worst case scenario is that you are at least break even, or if not, maybe losing a couple bucks, but you don't want to purchase an item that's worst case scenario going to lose you, you know, 20%, 30% or more, because that would be just a bad analysis. And again, the point of this is to lower our risk as much as possible. So yeah, think of this AI software as pretty much like your guide. If you are driving, it's gonna be, you know, your GPS when you're driving a car, it's just gonna help you navigate and work together at the same time. So here are some strategies and tips that can help you out when you are doing retail arbitrage. Number one is that you always wanna make sure that you have your reseller certificate or tax exempt when you're going to this retail stores as all you have to do is present it to the store itself and it can save you a lot of taxes and you don't have to pay anything if you are purchasing them for your inventory business. Number two is that if you can use a Bluetooth scanner, this is the one that I had used when I first started buying some used books to start my Amazon FBA business. This is called the eYoYo. I think it was like 50 or $40, but you can get them cheap on eBay for a used one. You don't have to get a new one, um, but pretty much how it works is it's got a USB to charge it here and you pretty much carry this little Bluetooth scanner so that way uh, you can just scan it with the uh, are here it's a lot easier and faster uh, doing the process if you're scanning a lot of products so that will be efficient once you start and get the ball rolling another tip is if you are a beginner I would highly suggest to put in the time and scan as many products as possible if you're going to different stores the reason for this is not like a punishment but it's, you will learn a lot honestly and this is how I got started and able to kind of get my process a lot faster and the workflow just because I had put in so much time so I kind of know what I will be looking for in terms of the sales rank, uh, the different Keepa charts that I was seeing. So it just takes time overall. So I would encourage you to scan the different items as much as possible and who knows, 
you might find your favorite category that you know you can source whether that's beauty grocery toys whatever it may be thank you guys for watching and if you want to learn how to work from home watch this video here how to do online arbitrage thank you so much I'll see you later